Right, I shall stop at 10.25. So, writing the body of the text, I'm going to divide this into four sections to say something about introduction and objectives, research materials and methods, and then I've got quite a lot of examples of how to present results. Because we have in English a rather unfortunate expression if you're a cat which says there's more than one way to skin a cat <laughs> don't ask me where that expression came from but it exists in the English language which means <laughs> William? oh it is if you, if, you, if you put it into Google there's more, if you put the expression, oh, I, well, it probably is, I don't go around. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't tried, no. <laughs> but if you put the expression, more than one way to skin a cat, into Google, it will come up with a lot of explanations. <laughs> but it, it means that there's more than one way of presenting the information. And I've got several examples that I shall say, I shall show you. So, starting off with the introduction and the... Uh, yes, the, the words in red say, the salesman pitch. Now, I believe that as far as you're concerned, the most, impo the most important part of your manuscript is going to be the introduction. Forget about the results, forget about the discussion and interpretation. For me, I believe that you need to focus on the introduction. Because the introduction is where you sell your research to the journal. You have got to make it clear to the journal editor that the editor needs to accept your paper because you are answering a an important question, you are providing a unique series of information on an important aspect of science. You are going to create a significant step in our knowledge of this subject. And all of that goes into the introduction. Because I read a lot of introductions from Serbian scientists and I find myself reading the words and thinking boring, boring, boring yes, another one yes, I've seen it before <laughs> and I get to the end of the introduction and I think to myself God dear, I'm sure somebody's done this before because they never emphasize, at least they never seem to emphasize sufficiently, what makes this piece of research exciting, dynamic, innovative, that makes me as an editor want to read the rest of the manuscript. So, for me, talking to a room full of people living in this part of Europe, you need to focus on the quality of your introduction. It has got to sell your research to the journal. So there's your salesman's pitch. You have to convince the journal editor and the referees of the need for your research and their need to accept it. There should be a question to answer or problem to solve with a clear increase in knowledge. And very often, uh, and I can understand why, very often you feel forced to publish every single experiment that you do. Because the ministry expects you to add bodova, poena, whatever it is, vrednovanya, m pedesitri, m pedesitri, i tako dalje. Also m tridesitri, tridesitri, and occasionally, if you're lucky, M. Dvara said three. So you see, 
every little piece of research that you do has got to be written up and put somewhere in somebody's journal because the ministry likes you to add nulla zaris three plus nulla zaris three plus nulla zaris three plus nulla zaris and if you do that ten times you know you've got you've almost got enough for an M21 journal you see but for you to do that ten times in Serbian nema problem so you've got to get yourself into the frame of mind where you actually target writing a good paper once and getting eight points for it rather than writing lots of little bits of research publishing them in Serbian sometimes uh, still a lot of papers are published in Serbian or English or in English in Serbian journals and getting uh, nulla zaris pet you know it's up to you you can make the decision but I would recommend that you go for this approach because that will have your science will then have more impact on the scientific community if this is the way that you approach publishing your results so uh, another couple of slides and then we'll stop rising up okay it says at the bottom here I'll show you the next slide and then I shall stop on the next slide a comments I wrote on the introduction on the introduction of a manuscript by Serbian researchers that I was asked to look at in October 2011 I know that's nearly three years ago two and a half years ago but it's still relevant and this was somebody wanting to write up their PhD research so I've cut out a slide which was actually part of the text that I had written lots of red on but anybody who has sent a manuscript to me usually gets it sent back with a lot of red comments on it so that's the way I am so these are comments that I wrote at the end of their introduction section and it says there is little justification here for an editor to publish your paper there are say already 20 papers on the subject and you just want to add one more which will no doubt just contribute to the complexity of the problem where is the increase in understanding that this research aims to achieve where is the novelty you have got to sell this to the journal editor and the referees so start conceptually by identifying a good story to tell a story that will lead to something interesting for an international reader then build up the background to your story as you present the introduction focusing towards the end of this on what is already known in the literature that is relevant to your specific research story and the questions still remaining to be answered this was a key problem in this piece of research there was no obvious reason why they wanted to do it so they were not stating a particular research problem they were not stating a question our research will answer this particular question and if I was a journal editor I would reject it without any difficulty so you've got to make sure that you provide the justification for your research to be carried out so a bit more information about what actually goes into the into the introduction you will need to provide some background on the subject area some background information on the research area that you're going to be focusing on and then the third point is very important for you to to focus on that clear justification for this research what is it that makes this research interesting worthwhile necessary for the journal to publish 
Now, I usually include part of my references to my previous research because unless this, unless this is your first paper on the topic, it's usually a continuation of a research program that you're carrying out. And therefore, I would always try to put the, uh, the previous research into the context of what I'm doing now to show how it goes to the next step. Clear statement of the objectives and hypotheses to be tested. It's not essential always to invent a hypothesis. Some journals specifically say, state your hypothesis to be tested. That's particularly true in the medical sciences. But you've got to make sure that your, your objectives are sufficiently clearly stated so that the reader can easily see when they get to the end of your publication that you've clearly achieved your objectives. And I've put at the bottom here, sometimes the objectives change during the paper as you're writing it. When I start my paper, you remember the question mark and the question mark, and then you have the abstract to formulate your ideas to give you guidance as to what you're going to write about. Usually, at least if you're like me, I will not know all of my results and how to interpret them when I start writing the manuscript. I will know roughly what I've got, I will have made some graphs and some tables, I've got the means, and I've done some statistics. But until I actually start writing the words and the thoughts occur to me, I won't always know exactly where the best results are going to come from, where the most interesting story is going to emerge. So, although I need to state the objectives at the beginning, I will constantly be thinking, what's the best quality story that I can make? And very often, I will find that when I process data in a particular way, it reveals something about the, the experiments that I was doing that wasn't obvious previously. And this might be more interesting that, than what I was planning on talking about at the beginning. So. I have no problem about changing my objectives because I believe that it's the quality of the story that I want to tell which is important. And if by changing the objectives I can improve the quality of the story that the readers are going to be reading, then I will do that. And I will go back and I'll change it in the introduction. So, don't feel that once you've decided what you're going to do, that you're fixed. That you've got to follow that line. Keep an open mind and always think about the quality of the information that you're giving. The better the quality, the better the paper. Now, by the end of reading the introduction, the reader should have a clear impression of why the research was needed, and what sort of conclusions are going to be reached by the end of it. And a typical length for most introductions would be of the order of two to three pages of double-spaced text. <coughs> and this would obviously depend on the research complexity. And having said research complexity, this very often goes with the journal. As you go from M23 to M22 to M21, in many cases you are going in increasing complexity of what you're presenting. Because very often journals will say, if they reject your paper, it's not substantial enough. And therefore, very often, to get your manuscript accepted by a good quality journal, you will have to be describing more than one experiment, more than one years of data, and so on, for it to be sufficiently substantial to be accepted. And that may need that you have to write more for the introduction because of the greater complexity.